In this video, I'm gonna walk you through getting admitted to an online MBA program and really spend time on what makes an ideal candidate. So stay tuned. Hey folks, Richard Walls here, and if it's your first time on the channel, what this is all about is helping you with your professional brand, career development, and personal finance. And if you wanna see more stuff like that, of course, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell so you get notified of when I post new content. And of course, if you like what you see, it'd be a huge favor to me if you go ahead and click the like button down below as well. So with that, let's get into it. So this is the second video of a multi-part series that I'll be doing detailing my, from start to finish, my experience with an online MBA program. You can see the prior video in the description below. But what I talked about there was my decision, why I decided to do my MBA online and specifically why I chose the IMBA program at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And in that video, I mentioned I applied and got accepted, but I really do want to unpack that process a little bit more, but really spend time on what makes an ideal candidate for an online MBA program. As much as you're trying to find the right program for you, the university is also trying to find the right people for their program. Now, the ideal candidate, as I see it, really have three characteristics. First is the candidate should have a good amount of work experience. I tend to think minimum five years, but probably on average 10 years of work experience. And the second thing is they have clear goals as to why they wanna pursue the MBA. And third, they have a track record of success both professionally and academically. Now first is work experience. Now I, I will talk about that here in just a moment, but I do want to first talk about the GMAT. That's a, what is typically the process for most MBAs is you do the GMAT and get your score and you submit that. What's, being, what's become more commonplace is for GMAT scores to be optional and it certainly is the case with a good amount of online MBA programs. Again, like I mentioned, they attract a lot of mid-career professionals and what's becoming more accepted is the fact that these GMAT scores aren't necessarily a good or bad indicator of whether or not the prospective student will perform well in the program or perform well academically. And if they have a good amount of work experience, the logic here is, well, what can this GMAT tell me that extensive work experience can't? Now, this actually played into my favor because for one, there's often a lot of time and expense that goes into studying for the GMAT to get a very good score. But then the second part of it is, I, although I've done very well academically for standardized tests like this, I would probably not have done all too well. Taking the GMAT and getting the score certainly would not have done me any favors. And as for me, I had at the time that I applied for the program, I believe about seven years of experience. So a little bit earlier, below that 10 year average that I mentioned a moment ago. But nonetheless, it was a good amount of work experience. So again, the GMAT wasn't gonna be a factor here. Now I, I will caveat that the GMAT can be a, a it can be a benefit if you don't have a lot of work experience. It can also be a benefit if the undergraduate GPA you have is maybe not that great. So getting a good score on the GMAT can certainly reinforce your case to be in that program. So what are some of the reasons that a university might want to have or attract people with a lot of work experience? And the idea I would submit to you and this is actually probably true of any MBA, not just online, but I, I think because online attracts more mid-career professionals, it sort of naturally falls into place pretty easily. But the reason that you'd wanna have people with more work experience is that for the learning experience in the program, you're learning all these business concepts and the way you might apply those concepts in your field, in your industry might be different slightly different than what somebody else might be doing in their respective fields. And so as you network and as you talk with your peers in the program, you can understand how they approach certain problems. There's so many fields out there, all with their own unique challenges. So for, for you, 
from just an enlightenment standpoint, you get to learn so much more when you have peers, other students that have extensive work experience, go really deep in their field. So it, it helps the overall learning environment quite a bit. The second characteristic is the ideal candidate should have clear goals. They should have clear goals as to why they're pursuing the MBA. And the goal shouldn't be just, hey, I wanna make more money. Well, everyone does. But I would submit to you that life and your career isn't simply about how much money you can make from it. Really, in my view, it's what are you passionate about? What are you good at? And what can you get paid for? And finding the intersection of those three ideas, that to me is success. And if you can identify that for yourself, that is your story. That is why you're doing this MBA, especially if that MBA can get you closer to that intersection, to that ultimate goal there. And as you go through the admissions process, you do your interview, again, pretty standard, but you do your interview and even in your essay, again, that's something you submit as well as part of the application process, but you should be able to articulate that story. So as long as you have a strong story, I think you'd be in good shape. Now, from the university's perspective, why it's important for you to have clear goals and what you're gonna be doing next is that the university wants to recruit top talent. They wanna recruit strong talent that's going to go off and do amazing things, have career success, and make an impact on society. And it does a few things for them, for the university. One is that it proves out the value of their degree. They can point to, here are all these alumni and here's what they've been able to accomplish after having received their MBA. But the second part is faculty, educators, everyone that's involved in the program, they have a personal vested interest in you as a person. They, they wouldn't be in those positions if they didn't have an interest in improving the lives of the students and seeing them do well in the program and doing well afterwards, that's what it's all about for them. So for those reasons, and because spots are generally limited in these programs, they wanna make sure they select the right students that are going to make the most of this MBA after the program. Third characteristic is that they have a track record of success both professionally and academically. So starting with academics, they'll want to see your undergraduate GPA. And so it's funny because I tell people and I really try to drive, the home, drive home the point that grades do matter. I don't care what anyone says because the way I look at this is somewhere down the line for whatever reason, you know, I didn't, you know, after undergrad, I didn't think I'd have to use my GPA for anything. Once I got into the company that I'm with now, it's, it's all fine. But now that I applied to this MBA program, they're asking me for my undergraduate GPA. Well, now I have to furnish that and I'm glad that I did well because I can point to that and say, hey, I did quite well in undergraduate. Therefore, I would likely do good in this program. So, and if I may finish off my soapbox on GPAs, here's another way to look at it, is a great GPA, best case scenario, it can help you. Worst case scenario, it doesn't really do much for you. Now, a bad GPA, at best, it doesn't do much for you, and at worst, it can actually hinder you. Now, I'm not saying that GPA is the be all, end all, nothing else matters. Of course, that's not the case. It's just one indicator, one variable within a more complete picture of a candidate for an online MBA program. So again, work experience is a big part of that as well, like I mentioned. So if you maybe don't have a great undergraduate GPA, then maybe you have really good work experience you can point to, or maybe you even go ahead and take the GMAT and score really well and point to that and say, this is why I would be successful in this program. So when a university reviews a candidate's profile, they look at someone holistically. I mentioned academic success, but then there's also professional accomplishments as well. And if you can point to a handful of those accomplishments, especially ones that you're, where you're working on a team, which if you work at any company, you're likely working on teams, that you can point to that and talk about that to a, a really good extent that here's what you contributed. And for the, the university, especially for MBA programs, there's 
generally a lot of group work that you have to do. If the program can look at this and say, well, you've succeeded, you've done really well in this context, because of that, we think you can also do well in the program because there is a lot of group work. We can trust you to hit your deadlines. We can trust you to be successful in the program. So work experience and having a track record of success can certainly be helpful and certainly for an ideal candidate, you wanna have a lot of that to point to. Now I talked a little bit about the admissions process here and there and I sprinkle that in. It's pretty standard, at least mine was pretty standard. You of course, you have referrals, you have folks that you've worked with write referral letters for you and you submit an essay as to why you wanna do the MBA, you do your interview and of course you, you get your decision. So it's a fairly standard procedure, I would say. So the, again, the whole focus and the takeaway from this video is how to be the ideal candidate and what to think about when, again, you have to think about what the university is thinking about as well, but what puts you in the best position to be accepted into the program. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, I invite you to leave a note down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you and answer any questions you might have. And if you want to see more content like this, of course, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post new content. And if you like the video, do me a favor and hit the like button as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you around.